Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Step by Step. In this trust series, we learned about the basics of trust and the method of joint for the analysis of statically determinate trust structure. And today we are going to see how to simplify this method by knowing what are the zero force members in the, any trust structure. Before moving ahead, if you haven't subscribed our channel, then hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to get the continuous update about our latest videos and share it to your colleagues if you find this content is informative to them also. Let's get started. First of all, what is zero force members? In any trust structure, the trust member having no force and it is not transferring any of the force from one member to another member, then it is a zero force member. And what is the need to find zero force members? Basically, it is needed to just simplify our analysis part. Let us understand this with a simple example. Here we have one trust structures at which we have applied a horizontal force P at the joint B. Now, if you want to analyze this structure with the method of joint, then what we have to do, we have to find all the member forces of these structures. So here there is totals, there are total seven member forces. So it is, it is very time taking to find out each member forces one by one. But what if you already know some of the member forces just by following the simple rules and then start analyzing with the other method of analysis for the remaining member forces. Here we have two simple rules to find the zero force members. First rule is that if two non-collinear members are meeting at a joint and subjected to no external force and reactions, then both members have zero member forces. So if we apply this rule in this structure, then what we can see that at the joint A and joint C, these are the two non-collinear members and there no external force is applied. Consider the joint C. Here, summation of Fx equal to Fcp that is equal to 0. And similarly, summation of Fy is equal to Fcd that is also equal to 0. And at joint A, if you see that summation of Fy equal to Fab sin theta is equal to 0. Since sin theta cannot be equal to 0 since here the theta is some angle. Hence, Fab will be equal to 0. And taking the summation of forces in x direction, then Fae plus Fab cos theta equal to 0. Since Fab is already equal to 0, hence Fae also equal to 0. Hence, at joint A, these two members having a zero member forces. So, after applying this rule, you can see that this structure previously having seven members, now it reduced to only three members. So, now you can easily apply the method of joint to analyze the whole structure. Now, second rule to find the zero force member is that if three members are meeting at a joint, out of which two are collinear and a joint is subjected to no external force or reactions. The non-collinear member has a zero force and collinear members have an equal force. To understand this rule, we have a roof truss model. Here in this roof truss model, we are applying point load B in vertical direction at the joint B. Due to this point load, let us find how many members are having zero forces. Starting with the joint D, you can see that member DC and member DE are collinear member and member DF is a non-collinear member. And here at joint D, no external force or reaction is applied. Hence, you can see that member DF will be having a zero force and member DC and member DE will having the equal force. So from this structure, we remove the member DF. Now you see the joint F. Here at joint F, member FG and member FE has a collinear member and member FC is non-collinear. Hence, the non-collinear member will be having a zero force. If you want to derive this, then consider a joint F. Here if we take the summation of FY in is equal to zero, 
then fcf sin theta is equal to 0 since theta cannot be equal to 0 therefore fcf will be equal to 0 and if we take the summation of fx is equal to 0 then fg is equal to fe since these are collinear members so they will have equal member forces so you remove this zero force member from this structure then you can see that after removing this structure will get little bit simplified and to analyze it fully you can easily apply the method of joint let's take another structure so this structure is having so many members and if anyone says to you to analyze this structure by the method of joint then what will you do? You just have to simplify this structure by finding the zero force member and after that you can analyze this structure with the method of joint. For the moment, pause the video and try to solve it by yourself and find how many members will be having zero forces. Okay, so we'll start with joint A. At joint A, there is a reaction and there are two members. Hence, this both will member having some forces. Now consider joint B. Joint B after applying rule 2, you can see that member BL will be having zero member force. Then at joint D, joint D also the same case. So member DM will be having zero force. And after removing these two member, you can see member MC uh, will be having also zero forces by applying rule to at joint M. Now apply same rule at joint C. You will find member C L will be having zero force. So these four members will have zero force. Now remove this all force from the structure. Now consider joint A. Similarly, uh, the rule two will be applied here and uh, member ke will be having zero force now consider joint h joint h also will be having the same rule and uh, member hj will be having zero force so after removing all these member uh, which are having zero forces your structure will get so simplified now you can easily analyze this structure so thank you for watching our videos if you like the content then hit the like button and share it with your colleagues and stay tuned with us and learn step by step all the concepts of civil engineering